you know this frustration very well. It's happened to all of us in the multiplayer gaming industry. Be it a fighting game, a first-person shooter, or a sports game, if you're competing competitively in video games, someone inevitably is going to quit on you. On this episode of the Boss Battle Show, we're going to discuss the phenomenon of rage quitting. DJ Combo. Back What's up, Boss Battle Buddies? Hi, guys. Today, we're going to talk about rage quitting <sighs> in video games. It's becoming a thing. Right. Tim, tell us a little bit about it. Well, the reason I'm going to tell you we did this is I recently have been doing the Ronin Dojo videos, which you guys seem to love. Thank you so much for that. But somebody brought it to my attention that they would like to see some topics on rage quitting in the next dojo. And uh -huh. I was like, man, I think there's maybe a little bit more here. There's more to it. It's a big just, topic. Just talking about it while going through some gameplay or maybe even just showing a couple examples of rage quitting because there are some subcategories of said rage quitters and yeah. why they might do it. So let us discuss. Let's discuss. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the big reasons, and there's three reasons we're going to talk about rage quitting, but one of them we're going to get into is bad game development, bad right. net coding. Uh, and this is prevalent right now in Street Fighter as the net code in Street Fighter is less than satisfactory. Right. And it uh, happens a lot in fighting games where the yep. net coding can actually be a, a big frustration because we practice things down to a wire, yep. right? Like we're down to a very specific frame and then if there's a slight little hiccup, things drop and you get really frustrated by that. Yeah, so I mean, in MKX when that first launched, the, the net code was terrible. We saw a lot of rage quitters there. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of rage quitters in Street Fighter. Uh, Call of Duty, this applies to all multiplayer centric games. Call right. of Duty, Halo, if you have a lag, um, Halo's not so bad, they have a really good net, net code. And I'm not sure about Call of Duty because I don't play the franchise, but uh, if you get into a match and there's a, like a connection snafu, you know, team members drop out left and right. Right, and I think part of the reason for this too is that as gamers, we're always adhering to a specific set of rules, right? We are expected to adhere and abide by those rules. And if it feels like in any way those rules are broken, then we feel violated. Right. So like I was mentioning with a fight game example, you know, we spend a very specific amount of time practicing something down to the wire, and then if the game doesn't keep up, we feel like that was, you know, a crime against us. So we rage quit as a response because we know how much time and effort went into it. And that applies to any video game. If I'm playing Call of Duty and I, you know, I pull a guy up in my sights and I pull that trigger and all of a sudden he just kind of teleports to the side and I'm dead and I get a kill cam that's a little bit different. I mean, I'm instantly just yeah, like, you're, you're like, on tilt immediately and it's just like, <laughs> Yeah, you're like, I don't want to, I'm, I'm going to quit out and then try again and hope for a better connection. Right. But that causes, in a lot of times, negative impacts to your uh, competitive score, which will lead us into another topic we want to talk about where rage quitting can benefit people in points and so on and stuff like that. Let's take a look at some of the examples. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. One of the problems with Street Fighter V currently is if you quit out in a ranked match, then you retain all of your league points. Gamers are understandably currently in a rage about this phenomenon. What kind of impact is this way of cheating having on competitive gamers everywhere? Perfect example of this that we want to kind of touch on mm -hmm. is Street Fighter V. Um, there's been a lot of negative backlash right now, but the big thing that's happening is rage quitting. And the reason this is a problem is because people are rage quitting in uh, benefit to themselves because there's Absolutely. a ranking system. Yep. They are trying to acquire points and climb up a ladder. And what they're doing is if they beat you, they accept those points. Yep. So that's a reward for them. If they lose, Pull you, the plug you and points. you don't lose the points. So they can ah. maintain the points that they currently have. And obviously that is, you know, kind of working around the system. And that is not something that we want to see in a competitive environment because clearly somebody's cheating. Yep, and that's really all it comes down to is especially in the frame of Street Fighter V, that's just cheating. You mm -hmm. are working to a point, you don't want to lose those that spot and right. if you're in danger of losing it, you pull the plug and you no repercussions to losing it. Right. Um, Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, and other games have workarounds like this, so like Mortal they, Kombat. They have a safeguard in place, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. So Mortal Kombat, if you rage quit, it's a quitality. They get like a cool death animation. The player that does not quit out gets yep. the win. Killer Instinct, right. if uh, you get a rage quitter, 
uh, quit on you, you get the points and you get the win. Right now, Street Fighter doesn't have anything in place for that, and it's affecting community negatively. Right. Now, they have announced that they are going to be putting something in place in coming months. Um, we just don't know exactly to what the details are. Um, in my personal opinion, so far, they've been fairly soft on punishing people. There have been um, very notorious rage quitters currently in this um, game that have been doing it frequently, and they knocked them down to zero, and they just went right back through it again. Because without the evidence and without having to submit it to Capcom, who has been fairly non-responsive on these things, unfortunately, people are just going to keep doing it because they can continue to acquire points. And it's like there's really no there's no punishment for the crime. No punishment. Just keep doing it. And there will be, but right now it's put such a black mark on the community for the game that there's a lot of like, no, oh, I don't want to play this game anymore, and it's affecting the right. the players. And it's really kind the of a sad thing. Players, the honest the, the players, the honest don't players don't play it anymore because it becomes very difficult to gauge your own skill. And that is actually a transition that we're going to for our third piece, and that is for the people who are doing this for a slightly different reason, which is frustration. Mm, yes, frustration. <laughs> you put hours upon hours into practicing, and you go in competitively online, and you just can't squeeze out a win. We understand the frustration. But hats off to the competitive players who swallow the losses, learn from it, and never quit out of a match. So as gamers, obviously we put some time into our craft. We do. Right? Yep. We have a couple hours in a week here and there. And a lot of people put more time into it because it is a career-based thing for them. So right. this is a, a big deal. At the higher competitive levels, you're going to see people maybe even putting in an actual work day. Yep. You know, 8 to 12 hours of actual game time. Um, and I, I personally consider game time to not only be the time that I sit down with a controller in my hand or a fight stick, but the time that I'm watching YouTube videos the time that I'm in a Discord chat with somebody talking about the game. Mm -hmm. um, anything that I'm doing to better improve my skills or my knowledge of a game, I kind of consider game time. It's an investment for me, right? So the final, the final rage quitter comes from frustration. The final rage quitter! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that comes from a guy who's just frustrated, right? They, they've invested so much of their time into this and something doesn't go their way. Poor losing, really, what it comes down to. Right. It is, unfortunately, it is just the wrong psyche across the board. And it's something that that person has to really work on to overcome themselves. And if they ever have any hope of getting better, and I don't care what game it is, it can't happen. It can't happen. If you're playing a game, and you're a competitive gamer, and you have your sights set on victory, and you know you take your losses to heart, you're losing, and you quit out, you need to rethink the way you play games, because right. that is bringing down the community as a whole and just makes you seem like a sour player. And with the advent of how big the internet is and uh, Twitter and social networking, if you rage quit on somebody, chances are your match is getting <laughs> you will, captured and you you're will getting, be called out on it. And you're getting blasted, which just puts a bad mark on your name as a player all around the world. Right. So from a personal perspective, I would tell you that I don't care if you're trying to be the best at a fight game or if you want to play FPS or if you want to be the King of Kong, Pac-Man, whatever it is, you really need to take that moment, take a deep breath and understand that you're not going to benefit as a player by just jumping out. Absolutely. Eating that loss is actually a great thing. That's what we learn from. And I encourage this in all of my dojo videos and I try so hard myself to accept this as well. I don't rage quit. I will just sit there and eat the loss, but I'm going to go back and watch that footage. What did I do wrong? Exactly. And that, that's something I just want to reiterate that I think losses in competitive gaming are the most important thing that can happen to you mm -hmm. in a positive way because that just helps you become a better player. Right. Uh, in my dojo episode, I go back at the reason I'm losing is because of this, this, and this. And losing is a, the only way you're going to get better. Right. And if you transition that to any other portion of your life, I mean, if you had a rough day at work and you just quit, I mean, just imagine the consequences of that exact example, right? You don't have money, you can't buy food, you exactly. lose your house, you become homeless, you get shot in a Walmart parking lot. That could happen, right? So what you want to do is you want to grow from these things. As a person, right, accept the loss, understand that something was better than you for a moment, and try and move forward with it. Don't get frustrated. It's all right to be upset because you're passionate, and that's great. That's what makes video games amazing is that you can take that passion and apply it. Right. But learn from it. Don't quit for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Never what you want to do. And if you're not a rage quitter, but you have experience with rage quitting, we'd love to hear your stories and kind of let's hash it out as a community. Let's talk about it. What have you experienced with rage quitters? Okay. Uh, by all means, leave comments in the comment box below or hit us on. The Twitters. Twitter. There they are. And from what I hear, Subscribe was that way. Now. It is over there. And check it out. And uh, we yeah. will see you soon. And let's play some matches and finish them to completion without <laughs> yeah. quitting. Love you guys. Bye. Tell them what's up, Gordy. Tell them what's up. What's up? Meow, meow. <laughs> Unicorn noise. <laughs> <laughs>